This is the Unstarving Musician Podcast. I'm your host, Robonzo. The podcast features conversations with me, indie music artists, and industry professionals. And it's all intended to help other indie music artists be better at marketing, business, the creative process, and all the other things that empower us to do more of what we love. Make music. Welcome to another episode. I am so happy to be in your earbuds today. In fact, I am honored, but you know that, right, if you've been here before. Gabriel Sanchez is on the podcast with me today. He's the founder, lead singer, and principal songwriter for the modern rock band Hope Darling. We are mutual friends of Bruce Warzniak of Now Hear This Entertainment. In fact, Bruce introduced us. I got to meet Bruce in person for the first time at Podcast Movement 2021 in Nashville about, I guess it's been about two weeks now. It was a good time. A little stressful because of travel, but it was a good time. So before I get to my guest, um, I just wanted to mention that I was interviewed by Chit and <laughs> Chit Chat Chat and Spin Radio out of the UK this week. And uh, in other radio news, my, my latest track, New Gods Part 2, has been placed into the rotation by RAK Rock Radio Broadcasting at RAKRockRadio.com on the internet. My efforts to do a little radio promo stuff. But I'm like a chicken with my head cut off this past week. But it's all good stuff, like I said. Well, I didn't say that to you yet. I was saying that to Instagram Reels, but if you were there, you heard it. Speaking of which, I'm going to uh, jam. Um, I'm going to jam at a thing called Music on the Mountain next Monday. Uh, today being the 27th of August, 2021. So this coming Monday, um, it's hosted by the organizer of the Boquete Jazz and Blues Festival here in Panama. It's a very private, exclusive, small gathering of local musicians and their hangers-on, or spouses, <laughs> partners, whatever. It'll be the first time I've had my drum kit uh, out of the house since I played three great shows with Worldwide West Side guitar man Johnny Bergen, February of 2020. That's a long time ago. But anyway, this should be fun. Lots of... Local play players will be there doing their thing with me. And uh, I understand there's going to be some food there, too, so it should be nice. And the views are allegedly spectacular. It'll be my first time to the host's home here up in the mountains. So at the time that Gabriel and I spoke, Hope Darling had been confirmed as the headliner of Rock the Park on July 1st of 2021 at Curtis Hickson Park in downtown Tampa, Florida. They just headlined a sold-out show some weeks prior in Lakeland, Florida. It was kind of a big deal for them. And last year, Hope Darling, that was last year, 2020, Hope Darling was a winning finalist for the Jack Daniels and iHeartRadio National Battle of the Bands. They also performed at South by Southwest in March of 2019 and at one point had even opened up at the 97X Next Big Thing concert. The band has also performed at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tampa. They're all over the place, man. They were um, in the studio finishing up a five-song EP that they planned to release either late spring or early summer. And I'm not sure that that's happened yet, but when we spoke, this was going on. But I'll know soon enough because I'm going to talk to Gabriel and uh, our mutual friend Bruce pretty soon. So I'll know soon enough. Hope Darling had a song. This is really cool. They had a song placed in Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It series on Netflix. And uh, their success story also includes a nomination by Touch Tunes as a national breakout band. That means that their music can be heard on any Touch Tones jukebox around the country. That's pretty cool. I know those Touch Tones, tunes, touch tunes guys. They have kind of a neat story in and of themselves. So I think that's nice for, for Hope Darling and Gabriel. Plus, Gabriel Sanchez was a winning finalist in the rock category for the song Lifeline in last year's John Lennon songwriting competition. We talk about all of this and Gabriel's sentiment that his band never comes in first place, but is always runner-up. He's okay with that, I think. Um, like we said, little by little. And second place ain't so bad. Just ask Adam Lambert. Check out Hope Darling's music and more at hopedarling.com. Here is me and Gabriel Sanchez of Hope Darling. Did you hear that thunder? No. <laughs> <laughs> is there thunder? Where are you? Where are you located? Panama. I was about to ask you the same. Where? Uh, are you, yeah. Where are you? Um, I actually live in Tarpon Springs. 
which but is I'm, it's um we're I'm down the west coast of course um wait I'm what about, state oh florida okay yeah i'm not in panama florida by the way oh oh <laughs> okay i was thinking oh okay i was thinking panama florida yeah yeah so you're in panama yeah yeah oh wow that's kind of cool cool no yeah i'm in florida i mean um, okay. i'm actually uh um it's a little town well i guess it's a little part of clearwater tampa bay clearwater called tarpon springs what do you do at, at work um i'm actually a um director of admissions for a drug and alcohol treatment program and a music therapist oh wow you know what i yeah. spoke to a music therapist yesterday and I didn't know about it until the very end of our conversation. So we didn't even talk about it. Um, she oh, no, actually, it's cool. yeah. yeah, she actually, I mean, that's my, that's my uh, nine to five and yeah, yeah. the music, the music that I do is really, I, I mean, yeah, just like most of us, you know, it just kind of elevated into something that we, I wasn't planning. So, so <laughs> well, that's cool. My, well, my hobby turned into, into another, into my part-time job. So, yep. How long have you been working with Bruce? Oh, wow. Uh, just recently just started, uh, maybe just in the last three months now. So cool. You enjoying it going well? Look, I mean, you know, he reached out to me on your behalf. So <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, um, I needed someone like him to kind of, uh, light the fire yeah. under our butts in a sense. So, <laughs> so we've been doing it. I've been managing my band for myself, uh, you know, just kind of doing our own thing, just kind of like, you know, kind of DIY kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I needed someone with a little bit more, you know, a little more resources, a little more that's going to give me, you know, give me, uh, give me some out of the box thinking. So, yeah. And, and I, his company, just for like listeners who hear this later, it's um, now hear this entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll definitely put a link in the show notes for anyone who's curious, awesome. but I'm yeah, I sure appreciate that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bruce is um, we've known each other for a while. I've never, we've never met in person, but um, he's introduced me to some other guests and, uh, uh, we had a kind of a stretch where we weren't talking just, mm -hmm. just, you know, time passing, nothing, nothing weird, but, um, yeah. So when we got back in touch though, he mentioned you. So I'm really glad that he connected us. Oh yeah. And, I'm, uh, yeah. He told me about it. I'm, I apologize with everything that for the delays, but you know, it was kind of one of those things like, um, you know, I, one trying to get my, my schedule to work. And then when I had my original schedule with you, my dad got kind of got sick. So oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Uh, he's, he's definitely better, thankfully. So he's home. So we're happy about that. So good. I'm glad to hear it. Does, does he live close to you guys to, or do you oh, live yeah, close yeah. to him? Yeah. 30 minutes. We're only about 30 minutes. So. Okay, cool. That's nice. Um, it's been a long time. My parents have passed for many, it's been many years now, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice to be able to live close to at least some of your family, but being close oh, yeah. to parents is certainly cool. Yeah. So, and yeah. so you mentioned that um, Bruce is kind of helping to light the fire under your butt. Did he, I'm kind of curious, did he sort of get the rest of the band involved at all? Uh, Cause he meant, you mentioned that you were, you've been managing the band for yeah. a few years. So how's that, has that changed at all? Or is it still you and Bruce now helping you? It's really just Bruce and I, um, it's kind of like I'm the, the band is, a, is one entity and I mm -hmm. speak for the, for the entity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's, it works out better this way because too many voices gets, it gets lost in the mix sometimes. So it's best that I speak for everybody and then it's just, but you know, everybody has their inputs. So everybody's up to date with what Bruce and I are doing and what Bruce is suggesting. And, and, you know, of course, uh, everybody has, has their own ideas, but I, I'm the founder of the band and mm -hmm. everybody that's in this band now is not the original lineup. So, but, so everybody that's in the band now is kind of just kind of, uh, just going along with, with the ride that I'm, that I yeah. kind of brought them into. So they really don't have that much clout or say anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I was just kind of curious, like I'm a, I'm basically like a solo guy with some, some great sure. help, but um, I was, I mm -hmm. played in so many bands, but never any that were like any long-term original band commitments. And so it was just kind of, I've always been a big advocate of people working with bands where everyone sure. can be involved to an extent, just because it's when you're DIYing it, it's so hard for one person. But anyway, right. you've clearly been doing some good stuff and smart deal that you went and got a little help too with Bruce. Uh, how's the EP? I felt like I needed it. So yeah, I'm, it I'm in the same place. I just released my second single and mm -hmm. um, I was talking to someone yesterday and I was thinking of uh, Bruce today, of course, and uh, this person I spoke with yesterday that's also a music therapy um, mm -hmm. or a music therapist, I guess is a better way to say it. Uh, she works with another 
uh, publicist that I'm acquainted with as well. Sure. And like me, I need to start reaching out to some people and see what I'm going to do. Cause you, you, there's just only so much you can do yourself. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the drive is there. It's, but sometimes, you know, I get, I feel like I hit a wall, you know, it's like, sure. I don't know how to get around the wall or how to get over the wall. And, you know, sometimes, I, you know, and I'm learning that sometimes just even like, even trying to contact a venue, for example, they, they don't want to speak to the musician. Uh-huh. They want to speak to a representative of the musician. You know, it seems like they're a little bit more open to speaking to management more than anything else. And, and, you know, there've been those times where I've actually had to say, well, I'm the manager of the band or I manage the band. And then they find out, well, wait, wait, they, like, they go back, look at the website, but they're like, well, aren't you the lead singer too? I'm like, yeah. So I just decided I'm, I'm just going to get actual representation. And we decided that we were going to, you know, do it in a more professional way, you know, make it look legit more or less. So as legit as we could. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Bruce so. is among other things, providing that representation for those situations. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. yeah. He's been doing just in the three months that I've worked with him. Uh, he was actually able to get me on a stage that I've been trying to get on for like the last two years. Which one so is that? that uh, there's a an event here in Tampa called Rock the Park, which is an open air monthly fest. Well, it's, it's like a rock concert, free concert, and you know, so he got us to be he got us on the he got us on the bill to headline a three band show one night. So we're doing that in July. Yeah, so, so I saw I had that in my notes. So congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so we we're, pretty, do we're pretty stoked about that. So. So where are you guys at with the EP? I was looking at, I was just looking at Spotify and it doesn't always give me the perfect picture, but sure. um, he told me that you guys were in the studio finishing one up back when we mm-hmm. first, when I first found out about you and that you're thinking about releasing it in spring or su- early summer. What's going on with that? So we're actually, we're, the plan is now September is what we're planning to. Um, the reason we're doing it in September um, is we actually have, we're, we're hitting the road in September. So we're actually going to be playing in a uh, music, uh, indie music festival in North Carolina. And uh, we wanted to do it as kind of like a kind of in conjunction with hitting the road, having it, having this new EP out. So when we get to, um, so we have some sort of a product also as well, when we get to the Indifest so that we can, you know, for merchandise, for merch. So, um, but we should, we'll definitely be done with it. We're actually finishing up the last song right now, the fifth. It's a, we're just doing a five song EP. We would love to do more, but, you know, as you know, time and money is always a factor. So right now the time and money allows us to have five songs. We have, we literally have enough song. We have enough music to do a full album if we really wanted to, but, but with, you know, with the pandemic actually pushed everything back. So once we, the pandemic was kind of one of those things like, well, we can work on a full album or we're and really get behind even more than we are, or just try to push out five songs right now and and push it out as an EP. So that's kind of the mentality. So, yeah, yeah. Are any of the songs published or are they all going to be released at the same time as part of the One EP? song, uh, only one song is really published right now, um, which is a remaster. It's a, it's a, I, I would say it's a remaster of, of a previous song. It's our song Lifeline, which I think is the one, um, it's our probably biggest, it's our probably most notable, notable and most popular song right now. But all the other songs we're, we're not releasing until we, we release, we're not going to publish anything until until the uh, EP's out, so. Well, that's exciting. And, and did I understand correctly that you had won and like some finalist category in rock for, uh, with that song Lifeline at, at um, last year at a festival, the John Lennon songwriting competition? Um, a couple of things, actually. I got the unsigned music. Oh, wait. So I never, I always feel like I'm, I'm a finalist, but never a winner. <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, <laughs> and it's cool to be a finalist. I love, I love the notoriety. I love the recognition. So, but yes, we, we got, uh, the song was, um, a John Lennon, the John Lennon songwriting contest. I got, mm-hmm. I was a, I was a winning finalist in it. So, which was cool. They, I got some merch, which was nice, you know, and then, um, last year too, as well. Um, uh, was it last year? Yeah. We won the, it's a Jack Daniels and iHeart radio. Well, um, we won a battle of the bands, like this whole streaming contest thingy. Cool. So normally they would have done it live, but obviously they're trying to do it through the pandemic. So we won that. And then what else? We just got like a finalist for the unsigned only 2020. So, okay. but that wasn't, we weren't a winning finalist. We just, uh, we just in that cool shortlisted, we just got shortlisted, but we were still recognized as finalists, which is still cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, um, like that. just remember Adam Lambert, right? 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, um, I meant to ask too. Uh, what was the name of the fest, the indie music festival? And did you say it's in Indiana? Um, no, it's actually the the one that's that we're about to do. Uh -huh. The one that's it, coming. It's actually it's called the Carolina Indie Fest. It's uh, in Sanford, North Carolina. So it's about a good um, fourteen. I think we we're we're we're, uh, we're re um, getting a van and we're just driving up there. So I think it's about a 12, 14 hour trip. Yeah. So we're gonna try and shoot straight there. Probably play. We're probably gonna hit a couple of. Um, there's one one venue that we might hit and play, uh, which is about three hours outside of that town, and then we might do some busking while we're in the town while oh, we're cool. in Sanford too. So do you have some so, experience with that then? Not really. Not yeah. busking, but I mean, we, everybody in the band, the, the beauty of everybody in our band here is that we're all the guys in the band, they all each have done solos, duos, trios. I mean, out of the five guys in our band, there's, a, a, aside from the, the, the drummer himself, three of the guys, so it's a total of three who are actually drummers, four out of the five of us are all vocalists, lead vocalists, and then, well, one bass player, and then probably, well, our bass player is a guitar player too, because he does solos. So four out of the five are all guitar players too as well. Wow. So technically we could all split apart and form bands our own if we wanted. So, mm -hmm. so, but no, and busking, we've never really done busking. And here where we live, there's no such, there's really no such thing. Every, yeah. If you're playing here, you're, you're playing a, you're playing a paid gig is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, so we do a lot of that. You know, a lot of the guys play venues, cafes, restaurants, bars, pubs, you know, whether it be a solo duo trio or full band, our band, we only really just do originals. I mean, they, some of the, some of the other guys that do covers things on that. So, but it becomes their bread and butter. Yeah. 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 Well, what, what made you think about the whole busking thing along the way for this little stint? Well, the, um, when we're in Stanford, they're actually, t um, they actually part of the Indie Fest, the, the promoters actually said what they're going to be doing is they're going to be setting up busking stations in okay. the town. Okay. So we're like, hey, man, let's do that. I mean, why not? We've never done it. I mean, we're going to bring our own gear, of course. So we're going to be packing, you know, some portable gear, you know, um, like Bose array systems. So we just plug in, just be able to perform on the run. So, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, we're, we're stoked about doing that because again, where we live, there's no such thing. I've never seen somebody busk here in, in our town mm -hmm. or even uh, or in the state of florida that i can think of yeah so, yeah it seems so. like it would exist somewhere with all the just the way the florida is but i i can't say that i've seen it either i was curious you know i was curious in asking the questions yeah. because i've had a guy on the podcast who um has published a lot of music and he's sure. a busker like full-time that's what he does and oh, super, right, super yeah. serious for him and it's a trip learning about it i mean i've kind of seen it and there was a time not terribly long ago like i didn't even know that that's what it was called it's you funny, know. you know, I'm wondering, I, I had this, um, I was in this percussion ensemble in when I lived in California some years back, and uh, there were nine of us. We had this annual gig at the Mountain View Art and Wine Festival, and they basically just set us up in, a, well, we, we took a tent. They gave us a spot there. We weren't on a main stage. We weren't getting paid a fee. We actually made a lot of money, but it was all sure. tips, and I wonder if they technically considered that a busking station. <laughs> I would think so because yeah. second, I mean, you're not, you know, again, like I said, the, the, the difference between uh, um, the busking and like, like there's people out here and where I live, they, they, they play outside, they play in front of, you know, shops and stuff like that, but they're paid to be there. You yeah. Know right, I mean? the, right, the, right. The venue says, I want you, I'm paying you for a couple hours, this, this number of hours and, you know, for this amount of money. So I don't really consider that as busking, you know, because nobody's, you know, I mean, it's, you're drawing traffic, that kind of thing. But, but what you're describing to me is that I would, I would think that would be busking. So, yeah. And, and I don't yeah. think I'm um, now that I said that, I don't think we got paid a fee. I remember now we sold CDs, like a lot sure. of CDs yeah. um, when yeah. they were still selling, I guess they still do a little bit, but yeah, yeah it was a trip. Bruce had also told me you've had uh, a placement on a Netflix show. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and that's so, with, with uh, Hope Darling. Yep, with the uh, Hope Darling, uh, the band. Um, so our song again, Lifeline. So it's a, it was a, it's an interesting story actually. So I'll give you the full story. My brother um, is a photographer. He's actually our official photographer, videographer. He does all our photos and um, videography. And um, he had a, um, a friend of his. Um, uh, his name is Guy, who's a location scout for film. 
here in the St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, um, you know, he, he listened he, he knew about my music, really dug it. And he told my brother one day, he said, Hey man, you know, um, uh, you know, I've worked with Spike Lee in the past, you know, did commercials or something. I don't, I'm, I don't know exactly what he worked on, but he said, you know, I heard his show is looking for some music. And he's, he mentioned, he said, I, your brother's really got, you know, I really like your brother's music. Um, I have an email address here for him if you want to give it to your brother. So my, my brother gives it to me and I hold on to it for weeks because I'm thinking, oh yeah, it's cool, but we're talking about Spike Lee here. You know, I, I was thinking he was looking for something more urban, you know, a little yeah, bit more sure. instrumental, you know, I wasn't thinking in the range of music that we're in, you know, which is alternative rock. Yeah. So I just remember one day I'm like, ah, I got it. I might as well just, you know, I got the email. I'll go, I'll email it out. So I sent my music out. And then probably about maybe four, I totally forgot about it. Three or four months later, I get this call on my, I get a call and I miss it. And it was on my voicemail and it's his people uh, best uh, with best borough productions. And they're saying, well, you know, I'm with uh, Spike Lee and uh, the um, said that they Spike Lee listens to everything on his, that comes through his table. So he had heard the song and really liked it. And then that's when it, the discussion, the conversation started said, well, we want to talk to you about, you know, um, using your music for our show, for our show. So that kind of started the discussion, but it was a year long process, mm. you know, because they were still doing the production of the show. Um, and um, so I couldn't say anything. I had to sign a non-disclosure. So, I mean, I could tell people in, you know, in public or face to face, but I couldn't post anything or, or advertise it in any way. I didn't even know what they were going to use the song for. So I, I just kept hoping, well, if, if they're going to use my song for something, I was really hoping it would be more than 15 seconds mm -hmm. of a scene mm -hmm. and it wasn't going to be in a, uh, in a, in a scene where it was going to be like traumatic, a traumatic shot. And then it's going to be, you know, linked to my music. Like it was like, you know, some accident or, or some, you know, something disastrous, but in the, in the end, the, uh, this, we found out it was a scene where the main character or some of the main characters are in, are in this art gallery. And they're having this dialogue and it goes on for about a minute and a half. And that minute and a half, my, our song Lifeline is actually playing in, in the uh, overhead. So we were pretty, we were pretty happy about it. So, yeah, that's cool. So, I, all those things to think about too, like you don't know, if, or if you don't know, you know, what's going to happen. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I was really hoping it was going to be one of those uh, end credit songs. You yeah. Know? So that would have been cool, but you know, but again, I, I'm not, in, I'm not in, I'm not part of the dialogue when it comes to the uh, productions. So I just, so I'm just glad that I was just fortunate, honored, and humbled that someone like Spike Lee was even able to listen to my music and then, uh, you know, uh, you know, enjoy it, let alone be able to use it. So Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. quite a, quite a nice little badge for sure. I also read something interesting. I used to work with a small startup that the founder was friends with the founders of touch tunes. And I saw that you guys got some sort of yep. nomination in something that they were doing and that you're in all the touch tunes, June boxes around the country or something. Yeah, that, that was kind of cool. That was kind of the, one of the first major, it was kind of one of those nudges that said, wow, maybe we do have something here. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So yeah, I think um, I can't remember exactly. I think it was in 2016, we got nominated as a breakout band. And as part of the nomination, they put us on touch tunes. And, and honestly, is you know, a lot of these things that, that you submit online, I, I totally forget about all these things until somebody <laughs> emails me and says, hey, guess what? You won something. I'm like, really? Wow. I, 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 I totally forgot about it. So it was one of those things. And then they emailed me and said, yeah, you guys are, you know, your breakout band. Part of the nomination prize is that you get, we're putting your music on touch tunes. And we're like, cool. And I, I would think uh, I knew we didn't win the full, the, the, the grand prize, of course. And I Adam was Lambert. always, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember thinking, well, I kept thinking to myself, like, well, you know, we were, you know, we would go to the touch tunes and play our, our music. And, and then when, and when the contest or the, when the, the, the whole event was over, I, I kept thinking, man, I, I wonder if they're going to take it off. And they never did. So now Again, it's, and, and as you mentioned, it's another badge for us, you know, that we can just go to any state here in the U.S. And I, and as long as there's a touch tune, which is one of the things we do any, anywhere I go is like, I make it a point that I find a touch tunes jukebox and, I, and I'll play <laughs> our Hope Darling song. So 
I haven't been well, following them, so I, did, I mean, it's been a while <laughs> since I've seen one because I'm I've been out of the I'm not in the states sure. regularly, but um, so I didn't know what was going on with them. But that, and I never even thought about uh something like that happening you know as a musician it would be kind of cool but you know, there are all these strange places that your music can get placed not strange but just like yeah surprising you know once you don't know about until you know about them it's kind of cool yeah yeah i mean it's just i mean it's one thing that i you know hear your music on the radio and that's always the first time i that happened to us i mean you know i i mean i'm we're on our phones you know we're you know we're a bunch of idiots recording our our radios you know <laughs> but uh you know just just getting like a just even a clip of it but being able to go out and have hang out with your friends at a you know at, a, at your local watering hole, and then somebody says, "Hey man, you know, like there's been conversations like, you know, hey you guys uh, you, you guys are in a band, you know, or it's like yeah yeah it's like and, and and somebody goes, oh yeah I'd love to hear some of your music, and then my stock answer is like, well give me a give me one dollar, and I'll I'll play it for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> So, so that's always cool. I always find that, uh, you know, amusing every time it's, and, and it's, and again, it's always humbling, you know, I, I believe me, I, I, I didn't get into music, you know, thinking that I was going to turn music into, into what it is for me today. You know, I, I started like everybody else. I'm a fan, a fan of music. I played music. I, I picked up an instrument because I was a fan mm -hmm. and I, I had uh, my icons and I wanted to be them, you know, and then it just kind of one of those days, you know, I, I, I started out in a cover band. Hope Darling was originally a cover band. It was friends and family. My brother was actually in it. My uh, my wife was actually in it. And then it got to the point where I just remember after playing, you know, every weekend, you know, every other day, and you know, we we used to do two gigs, two gigs back to back. I just remember one day I'm like, man, I'm I'm just getting tired, you know. <laughs> so and I just said. I, I got to the point where it's like, I want to, I want to, I want to do this. I want to do it, not just play music, but I wanted to be just like my idols, write a song, see where, watch, you know, see how that process unfolded from an idea into a full production. And, you know, I, I, I'm always, I am always flattered when anybody who listens to the song even digs it in the first place. So, I, I mean, I know nobody loves everything. But I, I mean, I'm I'm happy if I go to a, if I do a show and one or two people leave that show impressed by not just the the music, but but you know the musicianship, the you know, how sonically pleasing it was to them, you know, and that that they took they took they took a piece of what I created, what we created with them home. So that's always yeah. flattering to me. So that's a big deal at a show. You know, I was I just happened today to run across a new song by Mammoth. Um, Wolfgang yeah, okay. Van Halen song. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not his first release. I think it might be his second. I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. I was thinking because I'd listen, re listen to your, we've been talking about it, the one that's on, the one uh, that's Lifeline. been doing everything. Thank you, Lifeline, the one yeah, that's Lifeline, been doing yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you guys kind of have that same uh, melodic sort of upbeat feel to, yeah. to what I've heard from uh, Mammoth so far. So that's kind of cool. It seems to be in. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I don't have any, I mean, I'm not a trained, first of all, I'm not a trained musician, I'm not a trained songwriter. So, you know, you know, all I did really did was pull from different, different corners of, mm. you know, music that I listened to and, you know, what I was influenced by. And, you know, I kind of put it all together and, and I like that. It was like some of the guys actually like that. They said, because it's, it's one of those things like there's really no structure in what we're doing. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I'll come up with a chord progression that if you, you know, there's really no formula to the progression. So we'll, we'll talk about, you know, how the writing process and, you know, and the way I look at it is I, I just want to make sure that whatever we're doing, it's not, it, it, we, we as the internally have to enjoy it first. You have to mm -hmm. love it first. And then hopefully that once, because you know, your friends and family are going to love it. They're just going to tell you they love it or they they like sure. it. But yeah. I want someone who's, who's unbiased to the relationship and just listens to the song and says that is actually either really good um or i'm really digging it and or you know and again it's i, I just wanted i just want to be able to get the music to the ears of you know to of different people and and get the you know get the name out and you know hopefully they enjoy the music more than anything else so yeah yeah cool i think it sounds like you guys are doing a good job so last thing i wanted to ask you is what mm -hmm. have you 
maybe to this point in time, you know, what do you find the most challenging part of getting your music out there from the beginning to the point of where it's out there and people are, you know, starting to dig it? Like you say, what's the, what's kind of been the biggest challenge? Well, I would probably almost say it's um, in this world today. I mean, with the pandemic, you know, obviously it affected everybody. It almost like put on, it, it, for us, it put a halt on everything. It, it, you would think with the internet, and everything else that's going on, things would be easier for music. I mean, in some sense it can be because now nowadays you're able to get your music across the ponds, you know, without having any type of backing or anything. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the biggest challenges for, for our band, if, and, and not even just, not just speaking for myself, um, but for, you know, the entire unit, I think right now is just trying to get, you know, our music in front of newer audiences you know, in a live, in a live setting there, it's, it's one thing to play music in a Nashville or play music in a LA, but, you know, depending on your demographic, I, you know, I'm, I'm learning that sometimes the town you live in, they may not, they may love music, but they may not love original music. Sure. You know, they want to hear, you know, you go out a lot of times I, I you know, we go out and uh, we, we want to hear what's nostalgic to us, you know, and that's what we want to hear. And some, you just want to go out and I get that you want to go out and have a good time. And, you know, you want to hear music that you, that you, that you're familiar with. So sometimes I feel like, you know, trying to get original music out nowadays in this, in this mainstream type of media, I guess, or music media, it's, it's almost trying to, you know, it's almost an uphill battle trying to, trying to, trying to get original, this type of music. Cause yeah, honestly, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. When it comes to music, you know, I'm not trying to be innovative. You know, I'm, I just want, I, I write music just based on what I feel I think sounds pleasing to me and then pleasing to the band. And then hopefully we as a unit come together and we, we put it down on a track or, or perform it live and, and other people dig it. So, yeah. I, I don't come from a terribly different place for me. And I know, I think you share this from what you've told me. Like I'm just mm -hmm. in the, the couple tunes that I've released, I'm just really trying to draw from my influences and kind sure. of honor them and see what happens. So yeah, but, no, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Maybe one yeah. of us or both of us will have an accidental great something someday. <laughs> that's like innovative. <laughs> accidental would be good too. So <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, man, I really appreciate your time, Gabriel. And uh, it was really, really good talking to you. Oh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Cheers. I recently asked over 50 podcasters the following question. What's the number one reason that the startup of your podcast was delayed? Among the most common themes in their responses were fear, procrastination, and tech. What if I told you it doesn't have to be so hard? What if I gave you the confidence and tools you needed to start your podcast today? If you want to share expertise, dig deep into a special interest, help others, get more people to visit your blog, expand your personal brand, grow your network, then podcasting might be for you, and this course might be for you. Podcast Startup covers tech, which includes gear and software, hosting, editing, format options, marketing, and more. To learn more about this course created by yours truly and the Unstarving Musician, just go to unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast startup. This episode was powered by Banzoogle, the platform for musicians and bands to build their website and manage direct-to-fan marketing and sales. Banzoogle features powerful design options, a commission-free store to sell music, merch, and tickets, detailed fan data, integrations with social networks, and more. Plans start at just $8.29 a month, which includes a free custom domain name. Try it at banzoogle.com and use the promo code Robonzo, R-O-B-O-N-Z-O, to get 15% off your first year. That's banzoogle.com, promo code Robonzo. This episode is also powered by ConvertKit. Remember the old days of collecting email addresses at the merch table with a notebook and pen? Now that notebook has gone digital, so you can promote your music everywhere and keep fans both old and new in the know. And you can do it with ConvertKit. Use landing pages designed for musicians to create an easy way to promote your next album, embed your music videos, and link out to social platforms and places to download music. Don't rent your audience. Own it with an email list. Visit unstarvingmusician.com forward slash convert to create your free account today. You'll be supporting the podcast in the process. Did you know you can help other independent artists find this podcast by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you are listening to your podcast these days? It really does help, so I hope you will consider it. 
The Unstarving Musician podcast is made possible through the support and generosity of listeners like you. One of the easiest ways to support the podcast, if you're a musician, is to join the Unstarving Musician community, which you can do at, you guessed it, unstarvingmusician.com. In joining the community, you get tips and insights you can use in your music journey that comes not only from me and my years of experience, but also from the hundreds of other musicians that I speak to as part of the Unstarving Musician project and podcast. Plus, you'll get a free copy of my Unstarving Musician's Guide to Getting Paid Gigs ebook, the official version, and that's all for free just for being part of the community. You can learn about other ways of offering support by visiting the Unstarving Musician crowd sponsor page at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash crowd sponsor. And if you have feedback, please go to unstarvingmusician.com to get all my contact info. You can text me, call me, email me, leave a voice message right there on that page. Just go down to the bottom of the page and you'll find everything you need to know. I really would love to hear any of your comments, suggestions, questions, whatever you've got. And you can find links to just about everything talked about in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash podcast. All right, I'm peacing out. (laughs) Thank you for listening and sharing with your musician friends and fellow indie music fans. Peace, gratitude, and a whole lot of love.